Well, it's a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this independent off-tube studio commentary. The game at Ibrox has just got underway. It's another old, old firm clash between uh, Rangers and Celtic. And uh, bragging rights is really all that uh, Rangers can play for in this game. But that should be enough, really, considering how intense these uh, old firm games t uh, tend to be. Celtic winning the league now. But uh, they certainly won't want to give uh, their uh, rival any excuse to be happy considering Celtic's unbelievable run of uh, unbeaten games in the Scottish football. They'll be looking to continue that today. But already a strong challenge coming in inside the first minute as uh, Rangers were on the attack. Ball one back on the right-hand side. And a strike coming in from just outside the box from Ryan Jack. The shot is charged down. A second ball down the left-hand side is not going to get through towards Ilmaz. And a chance for a Celtic to clear their lines. But Ilmaz does really well. Just flicks the ball uh, straight off. Wins his side a throw. And it's a sort of intense start that we were expecting. And it's myself, Paul Shabakovic and Ben Rogers uh, taking you through the action. Ben, already inside the first 40 seconds. The sort of uh, match we can expect today. A terrific start from the host, Paul. Good afternoon. I mean, absolutely fab fabulous tackle, was it, from Ravi Matondo. He, and then Ryan Jack picks up the ball in a really good area. Actually, cuts inside to his left foot. Tries to fly the shot away. It's good defending in the end from Kobayashi. He's been, had a fantastic season, hasn't he? I'm sure Celtic... We'll be just hoping they can keep hold of him. I know there's a lot of teams around Europe that are in for the young defender, but he's had a fabulous season, nominated for PFA, Scottish Player of the Year as well. But it's a really good start from the host. You mentioned there, Celtic obviously wrapped up the, the title last weekend, but I think it's extra incentive for Rangers to go out there and really try and make a statement and, and get a win against their rivals because they've faced four times already this season and Celtic, of course, have won all four. They have won all four and uh, say if Rangers could at least end Celtic's unbeaten run to today after all these games, then that would certainly be something that uh, Michael Beale's uh, side uh, could be uh, happy about and they've certainly shown their intent inside the uh, the first minute. Ball now back uh, at the edge of the uh, Rangers penalty area. Celtic barely with a touch of the ball so far uh, in the first couple of minutes. Goldson tries a long ball down the uh, right-hand side. Tavernier just lost it in the sun, but uh, Lundstrom wins it back and plays a quick ball down the right here. This is one for Sakala to chase. Forces uh, Kobayashi into uh, putting it out for a throw. And again, Rangers able to uh, put some pressure on. Robbie McCrory is in goal for uh, Rangers. In fact, I'll do the uh, 11 in just a second because uh, the ball's coming in quickly from the right-hand side. A chance there for a uh, Matondo. But uh, he was heading the ball just uh, over on the near post side of the six-yard box. Not really in line with the goal. And in, in, in the end, his header goes harmlessly wide. Yes, Carlos picked up the ball from the quick throw in from Tavernier. And then he whips the ball across the face of goal. It's a really dangerous area. But as you say, Robbie Matondo, he's not really known for his aerial prowess. And he was in an area that was right on the right-hand side of a six-yard box. To get that goal was to really trouble Joe Hart. He's got more of a glancing effort, but he catches it full in the middle of his forehead, isn't able to turn it goalwards. But very good start from the host. Very good start. Celtic trying to play out from the back. And even before they reach the halfway line, uh, Rangers have won the ball back straight away. And here is uh, Ryan Jack now down the left-hand side, finding Ilmaz, who takes on his man, gets away and tries to get a ball into the box. That one is charged down uh, by Starfelt on this occasion. Out for a throw to Rangers right by the uh, Celtic penalty area. Three minutes in, a ball going uh, all the way back now towards the uh, halfway line. Up there uh, by uh, Deal Maz over towards uh, Cantwell, who's on the left-hand side on this occasion. You can expect him and Matondo to be swapping wings uh, throughout the match. Here comes Ryan Jack. Cantwell, first time pass to Ilmaz, and there's space over on the left-hand side. Ilmaz takes on his man and gets past him again. It's a good ball into the box, but it is also a good header away from Starfelt. It's back into midfield, and then eventually it's cleared up uh, towards the halfway line. But uh, Goldson quickly picks that up for uh, Rangers. Very, very intense start here from the home side. Lundstrom's ball just about kept in play on the uh, right-hand side by Tavernier. And uh, just about kept alive there as well by Sakala. Cantwell gets towards the edge of the box. Thought about a shot. He had Jack ahead of him. It just goes uh, square over towards Ilmaz. His cross is uh, low, easily uh, blocked off there by uh, Barda. But straight away, uh, Rangers have the ball back here in midfield with uh, Cantwell down towards Zilmaz on the left-hand side. Players to aim for in the box. He puts one up towards the back post. It drops here to Matondo. He may want to get a strike here. Sakala then tries to go for the strike. It's eventually cleared up towards the uh, halfway line. Once again, Rangers winning the header on the halfway line. It was Sutar on this occasion. Celtic just can't touch the ball here. Well, the jersey has been absolutely fabulous, Paul. I've just got to say there, what a ball that is from Ilmaz. Again, it's flashed across the face of goal, but this time it's got a bit more height on it. Celtic's defending his poor Sakala. The bounce of the turf of Ibrox just gets over his head, but Rangers come again. Here comes Sakala. He gets to the edge of the box, finds Lundstrom, who goes for goal. Save from the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. Rangers inside, the, in front inside the first five minutes, and you have to say that it has been coming.
For pretty much since kickoff, Rangers really have been at the races, and the strike initially was a very good saver from Joe Hart, but uh, the rebound dropping straight to Cantwell, tight angle, and he bangs it into the back oh, of the net. Brilliant from Rangers again. They just do not let Celtic out. Celtic try to clear the ball up pitch, but unfortunately for them, just Jew just cannot make the ball stick. Rangers win the first header from Conor Golson. Then here comes Sakala on the right hand side, cuts the ball back to John Lundstrom, cuts inside on his left foot, fires a shot at Joe Hart. It's not the best of goalkeeper from the English goalkeeper. It's got to be said because he doesn't beat it away from danger. He gets two strong hands on it, but he just beats it straight into an area where a Rangers player can make him punish. And Todd Cantwell scored a fabulous goal at the weekend in their one 0 victory, and he's made it two and two. He fires a low footed half volley strike through the legs of Joe Hart, and Rangers take a deserved lead it has to be said it is a deserved lead they really have been uh, superb from the very first minute Joe Hart as soon as that uh, effort from Cantwell not makes him he's up uh, on his feet putting his hand up asking for an offside there was no offside we are back underway and Celtic give the ball away almost immediately from kickoff here comes Cantwell now the goal scorer down the right hand side threads the ball into Matondo back to Cantwell thought about the shot he gives it to Sakala that wasn't enough space for Sakala to get the shot away it's cleared back into midfield and uh, Jack now plays it square to uh, Ilmaz down the left left-hand side. Here is an opportunity to try and get this ball into the box. Jack trying to get a pass in, but it uh, won't reach Sakala on this occasion. Has been cut out by uh, Matt O'Reilly. And finally, Celtic with the chance to put a pass together. That's a good ball as well to Abada, oh. who then plays it early towards the edge of the box. What's a chance? This is always oh, oh. off the post! It's off the post from Giyou. He tries to get a second ball back into the penalty area. Unbelievable here from Celtic. Uh, almost equalising with their first touches inside the uh, Rangers half. They've still got the ball here on the left-hand side. Players over here for Celtic if they can try and get a cross in. Uh, Jota was there on that uh, left-hand side. Atate chose, uh, chose to try and go himself. Another opportunity here as Atate gets the ball back. And on the overlap, the cross comes in. It drops into the penalty area. There is a deflection along the way. And that is, is that going to be up for a corner? Or is that deflected off a Celtic player? It may have deflected off a, a Celtic man. But what a response this is from the champions. It was an opportunity. Jota just with a, a fabulous first-time pass. I actually thought he was offside. But when you look at it again, he's been played onside by Starfelt. He's definitely onside you. And I tell you what, McGrogan, he's... He can count himself lucky there because he slips over just as the, the pass comes through to Giyu. And then it allows Giyu to beat the goalkeeper to it. He lifts his finish over the keeper. And you think, for all intents and purposes, the ball's going to strike the back of the net. But it lands onto the outside of the post. But that's the first time we've seen Celtic come forward and they've almost levelled. Well, they've won the ball back here, Celtic, as Rangers were playing out from the back. It was a quick ball in uh, from uh, Rolston towards the edge of the area. A challenge there on Giyu. No foul. And uh, finally... Rangers can now clear their line, and it's a long ball here for a Matondo to chase. Hart is there first. He just cuts it out and uh, puts it uh, straight out for a throw. We were hoping for uh, an intensive start in this game, and that's certainly uh, what we've got. Just to remind you, there is another game being played at the moment. Uh, it's in the English Premier League. Where Leeds have an early lead against uh, Newcastle. Luke Ayling on seven minutes, uh, putting Leeds United ahead against Newcastle. Massive game that will for both sides, but certainly uh, for Leeds in their uh, battle to try and stay in. The uh, Premier League, well, Rangers' uh, record since scoring first since February 2020, 82 times they've scored first. They've only drawn eight of those games and lost one, winning 73. So that stat certainly already says that uh, Celtic's unbeaten run and, and a run without even drawing games is potentially under threat today. It does. I mean, the Celtic, you mentioned the header on an incredible unbeaten run at the moment, 28 games, and their last defeat was against Real Madrid. So you can probably forgive them for losing that game. And... Rangers, I'm sure they would have just been speaking about that before the game. That's enough incentive. You know, our big rivals are on a 28-game unbeaten run. Let's go out there. Let's try and end that today. And let's really put in a statement win before the end of the season. That's certainly what uh, Rangers uh, went onto the pitch with. That's that thought in their mind. And it's been very clear that they really had a very good start. But uh, credit to Celtic. They've just uh, steadied things now a little bit. And all of a sudden, it's just a little bit more difficult for uh, Rangers to get a bit of possession. As here is uh, Yuki Kobayashi just inside his own half. Starfelt down the uh, right-hand side. Abada back to Rolston. Under pressure, they're all going all the way back towards Starfelt. And he rolls it uh, towards Joe Hart. Playing it uh, square now to uh, Kobayashi. Ball over towards the left-hand side. Strong challenge there from uh, Tavernier. And uh, a, a, a equally strong response there from Jota to try and win the ball back for his side. But it does work. Celtic are now back in possession. Going back towards uh, their own uh, penalty area. Certainly, that's uh, the first few minutes. It just felt as though uh, Celtic couldn't get anywhere near the ball. And Rangers really were very, very confident. They've won the ball back here in midfield. It's not a good pass there from Starfelt. One back by uh, Cantwell. He wants a free kick around 35 yards out. And our referee, Stephen McLean, agrees 
That's a little bit too much uh, contact there on the former Norwich man and a free kick to Rangers. Yeah, it's a really poor pass out from Starfell, isn't it? And you look at it again, Todd Campbell, you can already see in the corner of his eye that he knows the ball's going to go there. He just sort of baits Starfell to play the pass. He's already on his toes. He's ready to make the interception. He does just that and he's brought down. He's had a really lovely start, Todd Campbell. He's obviously in fine fettle after scoring the opening goal in this game. He got the winner at the weekend as well for Rangers. So he's just starting to enjoy life as a Rangers player and he's definitely enjoying the opening 10 minutes in this old firm derby. It's uh, Tavernier standing over this one and plenty of players to aim for in the side. The penalty area lifts that towards the edge of the six-yard box. He lifts it too much. It was always a little bit too high and that one drops straight into Joe Hart who doesn't hang about. He bowls this ball out quickly and uh, straight away Celtic can be on the uh, counter-attack if they can get players forward. Guillou just a little bit isolated but players are arriving. He does try and put an early cross in. Credit to uh, Tavernier. Got himself in the right spot inside the area. Heads it away into midfield but McGregor gets a ball out towards Abada down the uh, right-hand side. Abada at the edge of the box now. Rolston tries a low ball into the ground. It's only partially cleared. There was still half a chance at the edge of the area. But now Rangers do clear. And they're on the attack as well. And here comes Matondo. The rapid Matondo over the halfway line. He's got space here in the middle. He's got players arriving. He goes himself. And he strikes one straight down the middle. Well, you can see why he did it. He was in full throw. I just think maybe he should have put a little bit more behind that because in the end it just goes straight down the middle. He mentioned there rapid and he absolutely is. He, but he leaves his man in for weight, doesn't he? But he's got support in John Lundstrom on his right-hand side there, Robbie Matondo. I think he's gone for the glory where perhaps the best option was just to lay it off to John Lundstrom on the right-hand side. He did, would have then had a 1v1 situation with Kobayashi. But I tell you what, Rangers... They look like their game plan is, is working to perfection so far. They started the opening five, ten minutes of this game on top, trying to really get Celtic under pressure. They got the opening goal, and now they're just a bit more sort of cautious in their approach, starting to sit back more, but they're catching Celtic cold on the counter-attack. But that's because of the pace of Matondo and Sakala. Absolutely. If the two of them can uh, get a, a combination going, it's going to be very, very difficult. We've only had tw 11 and a half minutes, and we've already had seven efforts on goal from uh, Rangers and Celtic. Five from Rangers, two from Celtic. 3-0 in terms of efforts on target uh, in favour of Rangers. And, of course, they do lead by a goal to nil after that uh, rebound strike from uh, Todd Cantwell. It's with uh, Anthony Rolston now down the right-hand side for uh, Celtic. And here is uh, Lee Alabada, Israeli international. Got uh, pressure there from Ilmaz. Plays the ball towards the edge of the area. But that's uh, well cut out. Uh, tracking back into his uh, box there was Raskin. Clears it uh, down the uh, left-hand side, headed forward. And it will drop straight to uh, Callum McGregor. And uh, Celtic just uh, slowing things down in midfield. Kobayashi down the uh, right-hand side now. Rolston to Abada. You see that uh, Rangers initially were trying to play a bit more of a high offside line. They just dropped a little bit deeper now. Still not too many options for Celtic to get a ball into the box. I'm having to go back towards the halfway line again. Starfelt now back to Kobayashi. He's been closed down here by Sakala. Matondo trying to close down Starfelt. Really no, no time at all for Celtic here in midfield. Cantwell now getting involved and he's just got a little bit too involved there with uh, Rayo Hatate. Gives away a free kick. But I don't think Michael Beal will mind that. I think he wants his players just to make Celtic very aware that it's not going to be easy. Yeah, for the first tackle in the game, wasn't it, Sakala? We've, we've known that the, the route that Rangers want to take in this game is get in the face of their opponents, high tackles, high intensity, and try and make things happen. Todd Cantwell is, I think, epitomised that so far. He's all over the pitch. He, he's putting tackles in. This time it's mistimed, maybe a bit too overzealous. But it's a good sort of strategy from Rangers because they know that even sometimes a tackle will be celebrated like a goal. Oh, it is. It's absolutely. The, the way the fans will react to a, a decent tackle, even if it's a bad tackle, when it gives away a free kick, the fans won't mind that too much. And uh, certainly Cantwell, I think, has got a point to prove. He was uh, always a sort of seen as a little bit of a, a problem kid at, uh, at Norwich. Now, of course, he's not a kid anymore. He's, he's grown up. He's a far more mature player. And I think he's still got so much to offer in terms of uh, his attacking ability. And he's certainly had a very, very positive start in this game. Here come uh, Celtic now down the uh, left-hand side. And, uh, well, there's certainly a claim that there was a bit of an arm across uh, Jota. And uh, although he's actually holding his leg there, I thought initially there was, it was the uh, facial contact, but he does get a bit of a knee into the side of his uh, right thigh there, and he just needs a moment to pick himself up. But this is a free kick that Michael Beale won't be too happy about because it's certainly within shooting and within crossing range as well. It was certainly a foul. When you look at the replay, you couldn't really tell from sort of our pitchers in real time whether or not it was a foul, but looking at it again, he catches the knee of Jota. His knees end up colliding, which is actually quite, can be quite a sore one, an impact injury. He's back up to his feet, but as you say, it's a dangerous opportunity this for Celtic to put the ball into the box. They've got the height of their two central defenders, Starfelt and Kobayashi, both in the box, and realistically, this is a big chance for Celtic, and Rangers just need to make sure that they keep 
the high line, keep it straight and don't allow Celtic to get onto the end of the first ball. Yeah, it was always going to be a test for Rangers. Once Celtic did get a bit more possession, just how they would respond. And they've been trying to press as high as they can up the field. Just a little bit uh, careless in giving this uh, free kick away. And uh, Jota has picked himself up, puts that uh, cross in, a header away at the edge of the six-yard box. Second ball potentially here. That's not a good ball, though, from Hetate. He'll get another opportunity as the ball is played straight back to him by Rolston. Lovely turn inside the uh, penalty area there. And then an overlap. Rolston puts that one in. A great chance. Oh. A strike comes in. Oh, I'm not sure if it was going on target anyway. But uh, the ball deflects off uh, John Lundstrom and then cleared back into midfield. But uh, Celtic come again down the uh, right-hand side. It's with O'Reilly. Tried to uh, thread that ball in uh, towards Rolston, but this one is uh, uh, dealt with at the edge of the area by Ilmaz and then eventually cleared. Oh, well, it wasn't cleared, it was played to the edge of the box. A terrible ball out and suddenly a chance here for Celtic inside the penalty area. But uh, the ball played into Giyu and uh, McCrory is out uh, to make the save. But you can see as soon as there's a bit of pressure from Celtic, Rangers are starting to buckle a little bit now. Yeah, it's a really good ball in, isn't it? From, from that right-hand side from Celtic, from O'Reilly, I think it is in fact. And he drills it across the face of goal to the edge of the box. It's just a scuffed shot in there from Callum McGregor. And had it have been any better than that, he, he probably had the goal at his mercy. McCrory made himself big, but I don't think he would have been, I don't think he would have been able to stick, keep that out if McGregor connected as he would have liked. In the end, it was blocked by Rangers. I don't actually think it was going on target, but then it was a terrible clearance from Rangers. A chip ball back in towards GU, but really good goalkeeper from McCrory to, to come out, be brave and, and claim the ball and relieve some of the pressure on his team. But having said that, Rangers have given possession of the ball back to Celtic. They have, and so it really has been. We could see a possession stat for the last 10 minutes. It's 20% for Rangers, 80% for Celtic. And I actually think if you saw a stat from the first six minutes, it would be exactly the opposite. Maybe even more in favour of Rangers because certainly in those first three or four minutes, I don't think a Celtic player got a touch other than clearing the ball and then losing it almost uh, straight away. But the champions have uh, responded well now. They're just trying to shore things up in midfield. There's no space for them to work in midfield, though. Free kick given away there, just as uh, O'Reilly was uh, trying to turn. It's, uh, brought down by uh, Sutar, and it will be a, a free kick to a Celtic still deep inside their own half. Seven, coming up to 17 minutes gone, unofficial independent off-tube studio commentary. Rangers leading against uh, Celtic by a goal to nil, as indeed Leeds United are leading at home by a goal to nil against Newcastle in the early uh, English uh, Premier League game this afternoon. A ball played down the uh, right-hand side. That's not a bad idea at all. Abada was close. And that just shows you the uh, variety of uh, Celtic play there because it seemed like they'd taken a short, slow for a free kick just to play out from the back. And all of a sudden, a very quick ball down the right-hand side almost got Abada in. Yeah, it was good work again from Celtic. They're just trying a bit of variety, as you say. And I think that's exactly what champions do. They've got more than one route of success, one avenue of creating goals and scoring goals. And this time it was a long ball from them and it almost worked as, again, Rangers try to deploy a long ball of their own. I think that's going to be the nature of the most the majority of Rangers attacked with the likes of Sakala, Matondo. Cantwell's always a keen runner in behind as well. I think that's where you'll probably see Rangers having the most success, especially because Celtic are taking a lot of chances and playing this very high line. If a Rangers player could just time his run to perfection, they might well have a chance. Well, just as we say that, Celtic actually push forward here with O'Reilly. Had a bit of space in midfield there, but it's a very fair point that uh, Celtic want to get as many players forward to give themselves a chance of winning possession or indeed keeping possession high up the field. The uh, downside to that, of course, is if they lose the ball, there really is some pace in that uh, Rangers attack. And here is some of that pace now. Sakala chasing the ball down the uh, left-hand side. I think the final touch uh, is off for McGregor, though. So it is going to be a corner kick to uh, Rangers, which is a good response for them, considering that uh, the last uh, 10 minutes, as we saw from that possession start, really has been all Celtic. And the Celtic have hit the post. They've had a scuffed effort, which could have been better. And they've had a couple of uh, decent opportunities to cross as well. But uh, Rangers still maintaining this uh, one goal lead. And now a chance uh, from the set piece for them to test the uh, Celtic defence again. All the big men are up for this one. And it's going to be uh, an in-swinger here off the right foot of James uh, Tavernier. He does take uh, most of uh, Rangers' set pieces. And uh, he's getting a bit crowded in that uh, six-yard box for a Joe Hart. He's frantically trying to point out another player that needs to be marked up inside that penalty area. Here comes Tavernier's ball. And, oh, it's flat. It's low. It's easily headed away at the near post. It uh, drops into midfield and a strike. Well, it was going to be a huge effort there coming in from uh, Nicholas Raskin. But that is charged down by O'Reilly. And uh, out for a throw to Rangers down the right-hand side. Disappointing from Tavernier in the end. Yeah, the Rangers captain. We know the quality that he possesses. From set pieces, right? Celtic know about that as well. Of course, he got a brace earlier on in this reverse fixture it, last month. But, yeah, it'd be disappointing with that delivery. You, you said it perfectly yourself. It was flat. It, it didn't really beat the first man. It was, wasn't 
the best of, of balls in. And it was a good headed clearance from Celtic. And Raskin there, I think he just got a bit overzealous. He's shooting from 40 yards. It was easily blocked by Celtic. Well, it's Raskin's cross this time after uh, Rangers took a short throw. Then a ball drops at the edge of the area. And uh, left footed effort there from uh, John Lundstrom. Well, it more like a, a conversion in rugby. He certainly lifted that way too high there, the former uh, Sheffield United man. And uh, away for a uh, goal kick. But uh, I have to say, oh, uh, knowing I was doing this game uh, over the last few days, you sometimes worry about certain games being a little bit slow. How's it going to go? I, I've, I've never really seen a bad old firm. I've, I've been lucky enough to commentate on a few of them. But even the ones that you just watch as a fan, they, they always tend to be very, in, uh, very intense. They always, there's always something riding on it, even if there isn't anything riding on it in terms of the league. And so we've not been disappointed today. Yeah, we haven't in this over in 20 minutes. But we spoke before the game, Paul, didn't we? And we said, oh, those Celtic are champions. It doesn't mean Rangers are just going to come here and roll over. You know, they're in front of their home fans. Their home fans have come out in full force. They've come to see a Rangers win in an old firm derby. We've had four of these matches already this season. Celtic have been the victor in each and every one. So that means something. Sometimes it's just bragging rights. Even if it is for, you know, the day or a week or so, I'm sure... You know, Rangers fans will take that because Celtic have had a large majority of the bracket rights in all well, the last 15 years, really. But yeah. especially this season, they're on for another domestic treble. They're 13 points clear of their arch rivals. Rangers will want to win this match so badly tonight, this afternoon. And then that's it. It's just enough incentive in, in its all. And that's why they've come out in the opening five minutes, especially, and really put it on Celtic. And they got their just rewards. Yes, and they have. And uh, the way that Celtic have responded is how you'd expect Celtic to respond. Rangers are doing what they can to try and soak up that pressure. Here comes Celtic now down the left hand side. Jota been her harried all the way here by uh, Tavernier. Uh, Rangers fans on that touchline appealing that it might have gone out for a throw. The officials disagree. And now McGregor rolls this ball back towards uh, Carl Stoutfelt. Down the uh, right-hand side. Strong challenge there from Ilmaz, but it's a fair one, says the referee. And we play on, and it's a counter-attack here for Rangers. Down the left-hand side, Sakala getting towards the edge of the area. It's the overlap to Ilmaz. Oh, it's a terrible ball from the uh, Turkish left-back. He's got so many options. It's almost like he just went into autopilot. He didn't even think to see where his teammates were. Just fires a ball that's way too high, way too hard. And that's after what we can see from Arupa. That was actually a very fair yeah, challenge. Yeah, it was an awesome challenge. You know, in real time, you probably heard me grunt from it, but that's because it, I wasn't expecting him to come up flying into our TV pitchers, full force, won the ball, quality tackle. And I'll tell you what that is. For me, I think that's just him. He's so pumped up and the adrenaline's thrown through him from that quality tackle he's put in that by the time he's got to the cross into the situation, he's just overhit the cross by about 20 yards but if he just kept his call in that situation we could have been talking about one of the all-time great Rangers goals in the whole firm derby it really was I mean the, the tackle and then the run down that uh, left-hand side but yeah I think I think you're right it's just a rush of blood to the head it's almost like he couldn't calm down from that challenge and from that run but it's a shame because there were three players in the box uh, Sakala had got there Cantwell was there there was the player arriving at the edge of the area as well as uh, McCrory clears that one long a little bit too long as well. A bit of a, a look of daggers there from his captain as well. Tavernier, I think he was looking back at his young keeper saying, look, just take it easy. We're working very hard to try and win the ball back. And you booting it out like that is just going to uh, gift it straight back to our uh, opposition. But it's a throw down the left-hand side now for uh, Celtic. Uh, Bernabe throws it in. It's been won back straight away here by uh, Rangers, specifically by uh, Raskin. And uh, he was brought down there, but the referee allows play to go on, although uh, the ball down the right-hand side won't be chased. Uh, by uh, Rabi Matondo. He, he, I'm not sure if he was offside, but I think he feared that he might be. So he didn't even bother going after the ball. Uh, Celtic now able to uh, play out from the back. And here is uh, Rayo Hatate over the halfway line. Finds a pass down the left here for uh, Jota. There's an overlap as well. Ball coming into the box, but the cross is uh, charged down. I think it was O'Reilly that got forward uh, down the left this time. Wins his side a uh, corner kick and it's a good time to hand over we're over the halfway point in this first half 23 minutes gone Rangers 1 Celtic nil, and it will be Ben to take us through to half time thanks Paul an intriguing open 23 and a half minutes at Ibrox so far Rangers do have that slender lead but courtesy of their fantastic start that they made to this game they applied themselves from minute one and Todd Campbell was able to give them the opening goal but Celtic looking to respond here they've responded well to going behind but they've not drew themselves level yet the corner comes in towards G is headed away by Connor Goldson but it was an effort from Hatate on the edge of the box there Rio Hatate he's another one of Celtic's players that's been nominated for the player of the year he's between him and Callum McGregor they've really formed a fantastic partnership in the midfield this season the centre of midfield for Celtic of course and it was an effort there a difficult one on the half volley that wasn't able to control and keep down but Celtic have had a few efforts on goal, but they've not really come close to testing 
McCrory, have they? They haven't. There was that one chip over, as you said, when, when, he, when he had a bit of a slip, the goalkeeper, uh, and he's been put under pressure there with a very quick back pass, but he deals with it well. I think that's probably where Celtic will be f- quite frustrated. They've, they've responded well in terms of the amount of possession, but they're just not creating the chances, and here come uh, Rangers now. Great advantage there from Stephen McLean, and I think Sir Collins just nudged his man in the back, and Stephen McLean's going to agree. They tried to play a free kick quickly, Celtic, but McLean wants to have a word with Fashion Sukala there. It was just a, a slight push in the back of Ralston, and he's just calling over Sukala, I think, to have a word. Although it looks as if the, the Rangers player might be down, so I'm not ever sure there was something off the ball that happened there, but it looks to be on the back of his head, Sukala. It doesn't look. Yeah, let's have a look, have a look at this replay. I think there's. Um, oh, it's a different Rangers player. Oh, it's Robbie Matondo has yeah, gone down. It was between him and Ralston. They come up for a, a header, don't they? And you just see Ralston lead with his forearm, perhaps catch Matondo in the, in the back of the head. He's still down the. Rangers man, so slight stoppage in play. Yeah, yeah slight stoppage in play, and uh, Joe Hart uh, made a uh, sent a quick message out to the uh, Celtic bench, and he's just had one of his coaches deliver him a baseball cap, uh, which he's now uh, put uh, with all his other kit there in the in the back of the net. Of course, it's uh, in my youth, it was a regular thing. The keeper wouldn't even come out of the dressing room without a baseball cap, just in case the uh, the sun was getting in his eyes. These days, players don't bother with it as much. But this is a, a bit of a long stoppage now. This looks like a, quite a serious one here for Rabbi Matondo, and this gives us another chance to see the uh, the replay of the goal. Lundstrom hits it clean, uh, and uh, as you mentioned there in the uh, in the replay, it wasn't the best uh, from Hart. I initially thought that he did well to to get his. Uh, his arms are crossed, but he's not done enough to change the direction of the ball, and it was a very quick uh, finish from uh, from Cantwell as well. You don't want to make t- excuses for Joe Hart, but maybe the sun was playing a part. It's been out all since the kickoff, really, at Ibrox. Interesting to see whether or not that maybe played a part because he's a, he's a quality goalkeeper, isn't he? Isn't he, Joe Hart? And when you look at that, he's just not covering himself in glory. It's a, it's a, it's a good strike from John Lundstrom, of course, but Joe Hart will just be expecting himself to beat that way from danger and behind for a corner, but he doesn't turn it around the post straight out into danger and Todd Campbell does really well to keep that half body finished down it looks as if Leeds United may well have a penalty at Ellen Road as 1-0 of course that already Luke Aiden's got the goal they do have a penalty Joel Linton has commit that foul we'll let you know whether or not Patrick Bamford I presume or Rodrigo it'll be one be of those yeah it'll be one of those who you would uh, you would guess and uh, this uh, stoppage is taking a little while here at uh, Ibrox so we we're hoping that it's not going to be anything too serious here but uh, in any case if uh, uh, Matondo is uh, able to uh, get back on his feet. Patrick Bamford's had a penalty saved by Nick Pope, diving away to his right-hand side. Fantastic save from the English goalkeeper and he's able to get to the rebound as well. We just see it on our pictures that we have inside of our studio. The penalty is missed by Patrick Bamford and that could be a massive moment at yeah, the bottom I mean, of the He's missed Premier nearly League. everything this season without <laughs> being too cruel on Patrick Bamford. He's had a very tough season with injuries as well but he's missed a couple of big chances for Leeds. Uh, this season and now missing a penalty uh, before. I mean, you, you, you can catch Newcastle cold. It's been, a few teams have proven that this season where uh, Newcastle don't always start games particularly well. I mean, they got uh, humbled really by Aston Villa going back a few games and uh, this potentially could have been another one of those as we're back on the way here at Ibox. It was a long old stoppage there for Rabbi Matondo to be checked over. He's back on his feet now, but interestingly enough, a slight problem there for uh, Hyung Kyu as he chased a long ball towards uh, Rangers' penalty. It just seemed to crouch down in a bit of pain, but uh, Celtic now back in possession. He was clutching his midriff, wasn't he, Hyung Kyu? It was a good chance that comes in there from... Raskin in the Rangers midfield, but it's only in vain. It's going to be a Celtic throw, which they take quickly towards Hyung Gyu and Connor Goldson has to get his head over to it. He does just that, puts it behind for a Celtic throw in, just about right near the corner flag on that far left hand side at Ibrox. Celtic responded well to going behind, as we mentioned, but Rangers have stuck to their, their defensive task very resolutely so far, and Celtic find it difficult to break open Michael Bill's side as they take this throw in quickly on that left hand side and between Burnaby and O'Reilly, I think they're going to win a throw in again. It was just off the foot of James Tavernier, and it is going to be yet another Celtic throw in over on that far left hand side. Burnaby takes it quickly towards Kobayashi. Kobayashi thought about the square ball, but instead plays a long left footed switch of play towards the far right hand side, the near right hand side, I should say. He plays that well to Callum McGregor. McGregor under pressure from Todd Campbell. It's a poor ball, and Sakala will look to break now. He's got no support. He's going to have to go on his own. Sakala's one on one with Starfelt. Can he beat him, Sakala? Trying to use his pace against Starfelt. Good defending, but his back pass to Joe Hart wasn't the best. Joe Hart's got a slide just about to keep it in and stretch. He does just that. But Rangers, I think, have won that throw in. No, it's gone to Celtic, but a few worrying signs there for the visitors as 
So Carlo almost got him behind. He did get almost get him behind, but fair play, Starfelt. Not, he knows he's not going to win a sprint race with uh, Sir Carlo, but he, he used all of his experience there and uh, used all of his uh, nows to try and uh, stop what uh, Sir Carlo was doing. And he's just about able to do it. As you said, he put his goalkeeper under a bit of pressure with the uh, uh, resulting back pass, but now a fight for it in midfield. And uh, Celtic do come out with it. It's a still a good intensity to the game, but uh, naturally it has slowed down a little bit from that uh, frenetic start we had in the first 10 minutes. A yeah, frenetic start here and a frenetic start and the only Premier League game we've got going on at the moment is Newcastle United seem to have a penalty at Ellen Road just a few moments after Patrick Bamford misses a penalty it may well be a penalty for Newcastle Max Verber has been the judge to have fouled his man in the box so we'll keep you updated whether or not they score that but as for now Celtic come forward with a long ball forward there really good header it has to be said from Suter because it looked all for all in terms of purposes there that Hyung Gyu may well just get ahead of him but it's good defending from the Rangers man and he plays a long ball forward then McCrory towards James Tavernier, who's beaten in the air by Burnaby. But again, it's a Rangers throw in. Rangers just starting to push higher up the pitch now in these last couple of minutes. It looked as if Celtic were growing into the game, starting to force Rangers back. But I think Rangers, that Matondo break has actually been quite handy for them because it's allowed them to reset. Yeah. Probably allowed Michael Bill to have a few words. Exactly that, players. exactly that. But I think what's happened is Rangers have been told to just start playing higher up the field. I think they were encouraging Celtic to get forward, to actually have a bit more attacking possession. That's worked against uh, Rangers in terms of Celtic getting closer to that box. Now, on this occasion, uh, Rangers' attack comes to nothing. It goes out uh, for a throw. But uh, in the meantime, that uh, penalty at Ellen Road has been converted. So Callum Wilson uh, did what Patrick Bamford couldn't do two minutes earlier. He scores from the spot. And at Ellen Road, it's now Leeds United 1, Newcastle United 1. Yeah, that could be a massive moment come the end of the season, couldn't it, for Sam Allardyce's side. I think... Callum Wilson's got a terrific record against Leeds United as well, and he's come back again to haunt them. He's levelled it. Todd Campbell comes in with a strong challenge there on Burnaby, but between the pair of them, there's a few challenges from Todd Campbell coming in, but they were both really well timed, Campbell. He's just putting himself about here, and now he's got possession of the ball thanks to his hard work. Really quick feet in there to turn past Tate and Burnaby, and he wins the free kick. A lovely little pirouette in there, and he celebrates it like a goal. I'm sure the Ibrox crowd will absolutely love that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Campbell there. Trying to do his best to really wind up uh, Alexandro Bernabe, and it worked in the end. Bernabe stuck a foot in, but he didn't really need to. And had a very little chance of winning the ball there, and uh, as I say, it was probably borderline yellow. I think the referee maybe just uh, figured that there have been a couple of strong challenges in this game, but by and large, it's not been uh, too aggressive so far. And a free kick now to uh, Rangers. Quite a long way out, but certainly uh, uh, Tavernier, if he gets the right sort of lift on this one, he could certainly cause problems. Yeah, he certainly could. As as you said, it's very far out, isn't it? It's just inside the Celtic half. But it will be a long ball in there from Tavernier. It's a good delivery as well towards the head of John Lundstrom. It's Kobayashi coming back. It was an important header on it. And Rangers are able to see it out there, courtesy of Suter, out for a Rangers corner. And the host, as I mentioned, that Michael Bill, sort of the Matondo stoppage, which allowed Michael Bill to get a few words into his players' instructions, seems to have just spurred them on again. Because it looks like the Rangers that we saw in the opening five or six minutes of this game. It's a Rangers corner as they look to double their advantage. They've not beaten Celtic this season in previous four attempts. Of course, the last meeting was two weeks ago in that Scottish Cup semi-final. Rangers would love street revenge here. And they're on course for it at the moment. They lead this game by a goal to nil. And they have a corner, which Tavernier has come across to this right-hand side to take. In swinging ball in towards the back post. It's met by Connor Goldson, but he can't get any real contact on it but it looks as if it may come off may well have come off Starfelt last because referee Stephen McLean and his linesman are in agreement that it's yet another Rangers corner and it is it's just Starfelt's head there before Connor Goldson could get on the end of it it's a Rangers corner yeah I mean you could argue that Starfelt was almost out of position for a big centre back he wasn't quite in the mix with all the other players there but in the, ended up being in the right place just to got his head to that just as uh, Goldson was looking to try and do something it's going to be an outswinger here from Tavernier it's, again the Rangers captain has come across to an out swing and delivery towards the head of Sakon. It's flicked on and in the back of the net. I thought for a second it may be an own goal. I can't see, even see who the goal scorer is. It's a Suta. massive goal. It's Suta in the centre half. And I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a replay of this, but it looked as if the ball was behind him almost. This could may well could be like a scorpion's technique. It was an interesting one to see. I don't think he meets it with his head. But Rangers have doubled their advantage and the pressure in the last couple of minutes have really told the big centre half of Rangers. We'll see the ball that comes in again here from Tavernier. And then it's... Oh, it is his oh, head. Oh, it is his head. It's just the way he, he's almost sort of had to stop his dive mid-dive and then just to make sure the ball actually ends up on his head. He's also been uh, trying to get away from the uh, Celtic man. I think it's uh, Tate who's got tangled with him, but uh, that's a good header. It's a great header from Sutar. And uh, Joe Hart, he was still moving back into the middle, having adjusted for the cross, and he had no way of sorting his feet out in time. 
and uh, Rangers. They weathered a storm from uh, Celtic just after they scored their first. But John Suter with his first ever goal for Rangers. And it's a massive one because it puts them two up against the Celtic side that well, haven't lost in the Scottish League for over six months, if longer than that even. Yeah, they haven't lost since November, of course. And that was against Real Madrid, of course, in the Champions League. But what a goal from John Suter from a... a TV angle in real time it looked as if the ball was really behind him because of the way that Sakala dives in front of him but then you see on the replay there he does so well to hold off his man and the header is fantastic Joe Hart no chance fantastic goal from Rangers they've doubled their advantage and now Ibrox is absolutely bouncing you can see on our independent off tube studio based television pictures Rangers as Paul's just said there John Suter with his first goal for the club, the former Hearts and Dundee United man. And what a time, what a place, what a game to get your first goal in. Massive. Rangers have doubled their lead. And I tell you what, it's no more than what they deserve because although Celtic had a lot of the possession in between sort of the 10th minute of the game and up until about 25, 30 minutes in, they didn't really create that much other than the, the opportunity from Hyong Gu. And that was courtesy of McCrory slip. But other than that, Rangers defended really resolutely were on the back foot. And now they've found a second wind in this first half. They're on top. They've doubled their advantage. They've made the, t the pressure pay. They really have made the pressure pay. And uh, Celtic haven't done enough really to, to get into the, the face of Rangers in the same way that the home side have. Just for the uh, interest of clarity, it was the 18th of September Away to St Mirren. That's the last time Celtic lost a domestic game in Scottish football. So, uh, as I say, we're only a few days away uh, from that being nine months. An incredible record. And that record really is under threat now. And that is the only league game that Celtic have lost this season. Of course, only lost one league game. This is their first game back as Scottish Premiership champions. That was their 53rd title. But it's not been a very happy game for them so far. And I'm sure that championship will be a distant memory at the minute because... They're losing 2-0 against their arch rivals, a game that they always want to win, no matter the occasion, no matter what's going on in the league. They may well be 13 points above their old firm rivals, but at the moment they're thoroughly second best. They're 2-0 down, 36 minutes played. Rangers 2, Celtic 0. Todd Campwell with the opening goal after just a couple of minutes. And then a John Suter goal just a few moments ago doubled Michael Bill's side's advantage. The Celtic look to respond here with McGregor. He finds the feet of Ralston. Ralston has support... In the form of Callum McGregor again. He finds McGregor over to Hatate. Hatate finds Jota on the far left hand side. He's one on one with Tavernier. He stands him up. Jota gets inside onto his right foot though. But again, he's met with a strong chance. Finds a nice ball in to the feet of Hatate though. Back to Jota. Jota. His touch evades him, and then there's a foul, and they're surely on Matondo from McGregor. But McLean waves play on, and this is a real opportunity for Rangers. It's momentarily three on three. If the right pass can be picked in towards Fashion Sakala, is Joe Hart going to beat him there just about? Joe Hart really quick up his line. He sprung off his line there, and he had to because had Sakala <coughs> beat him to that ball. Joe Hart may well have given a penalty, and he could have been sent his marching orders. Well, that was very well timed from Joe Hart. There was just enough of a window there for him to get out and get that ball just before uh, Sakala uh, would have got there before him. But uh, sending warning signs uh, to uh, Celtic all the time, even now when they're trying to respond with a little bit, of, a little bit more possession, having conceded that second goal. As soon as they lose it, Rangers are straight away trying to get forward. Jota with the ball again on this left-hand side. Good defending there from the Rangers skipper. He finds John Lundstrom. Not John Lundstrom's ball forward is a poor one though, and it will be a Celtic throw. And as they look to at least reduce this deficit before half time, I'm sure Pustakoglu won't be very happy of what he's seen from his side. In the opening 37 and a half minutes, they weren't able to weather that early Rangers storm and they found a goal behind within a couple of minutes and then they had a bit of response. They had a lot of the ball, but as I should mention, they didn't really make it pay and Rangers did. As soon as they got their second win, they were able to produce things as Todd Campbell there almost dispossessed Kobayashi. It was better defending this time from Celtic as they pick the ball up again with Callum McGregor. He finds Jota on that left-hand side. He puts Connor Goldson under pressure, but Goldson finds his goalkeeper... McCrory, but McCrory's attempted clearance there was a slice one. It will be a Celtic throw in, deep in Rangers' defensive possession. But again, they're going to come forward, Celtic, with McGregor. McGregor will find Starfelt. Starfelt to Kobayashi. And Celtic, again, just have the how they responded with the first goal. They responded to this second setback by dominating the possession of the ball, but again, not really being able to do much with it. No, it's been difficult for Celtic. I think that uh, you have to give credit to Rangers, but also you've got to say that Celtic just perhaps not enough creativity with their possession because straight away Rangers win it back and they're on the attack. Yeah, two or three passes for Rangers and they turn from defence to attack again as Matondo will find his left back, Ilmaz, and Ilmaz just tried to fire a left-footed cross across the face of goal, but 
It was Fashion Ticada there at the back post, but Starfelt again does well to intervene. He's been probably the rock at the back for Celtic so far. It seems that every time Rangers come forward, they would be creating an opportunity or Starfelt said to deny them. And it's, it's just the right, it's just, it's just as well that uh, Starfelt is where he is because uh, there was certainly a chance for the Rangers man stood just behind him to get to that, but it's going to be a corner kick now from the uh, left-hand side. Good opportunity here to get to this ball into the box. The camera focusing on uh, the two centre-backs there, uh, Sutar and Goldson. Tavernier's uh, crosses. The in-swinging crosses haven't been great. The Rangers course scored from an out-swinging cross, but Tavernier now needs to get a bit more height on this ball. Yeah, it was a great ball last time out, though, wasn't it, for that second goal that John Suter was able to get in the end of. But as you say, this time it's an in-swinging ball, the opposite side from where Rangers just scored. You can really see how sunny it is because there's a shade where Tavernier's taking... His corner from now is the, about the only shaded area in Ibrox. Other than that, the sun is really booming out in Scotland this evening. The interesting ball comes in. It's a dangerous one as well. Cleared out. Put back in by John Suter. was looking to get a brace. Imagine that. You've not scored for your club. And you almost get two within a matter of minutes from centre-half in an old firm derby. But I think the referee is going to penalise for a foul here against Ryan Jack. He, yeah, he sort of gets his man in a headlock there. Rio Hatate it was. Ryan Jack... Gets him in the headlock and it's a good uh, spot there from the fourth of uh, the linesman, I should say, as Celtic take that free kick quickly. Come down the other end, trying to put a ball into the box on that left-hand side, courtesy of Jota, but he was off balance. He felt a slight nudge from Tavernier and it was simple in the end for McCrory, straight down the throat of the goalkeeper. Yeah, easy for the goalkeeper to make uh, the save uh, on that occasion. And he rolls this out uh, quickly. That, that has been the problem uh, for, for Celtic throughout this first half. That they've been able to get near that Rangers penalty here, but they've not really forced McCrory into any kind of save so far. No, they haven't been able to test the Rangers goalkeeper, who's kept three clean sheets in his last three Rangers games. But they've been quite sparse, his games, it has to be said. He, of course, played in the win at the weekend. But before that, it's been almost over a year before his last Rangers appearance. So he's struggled for... Game time, really, but it's courtesy of injuries. And, of course, Alan McGregor is more than capable goalkeeper. It is also always difficult when you have good competition for places in a side. But that is the magnitude and what makes a good team, isn't it? Having good good depth within your ranks. And Alan McGregor approaching the end of his career now is can only still for a place on the bench this afternoon. He's been a part of plenty of old firm successes and failures, of course, as Rangers know in recent years. It's not quite been... Playing Saint in for them in this fixture, but they do lead it at the moment by two goals to nil. So approach the 42nd minute of this match. Independent off tube studio based coverage as Celtic look to respond with McGregor. McGregor's been dispossessed though again by Rangers. Was there a slight foul in there? Celtic thought there was, but Lundstrom will bring the ball out for them to Tavernier. And now they'll come out now with their captain Tavernier who fired the ball to the left hand side to Sakala in between Starfelt and his defensive partner Kobayashi. They do just enough for a second there. It looked as if Sakala might just get the break of the ball because it was deflections in there of about two or three players and it almost broke kindly for the Rangers forward but just about the Zambian was denied by Starfelt. Well, he, he used the fact that, that that pass to him was a little bit over hit but the bounce of the ball meant that he could just about get in between the two defenders and he almost uh, was able to get that shot away but uh, as I say I wouldn't like to defend against Fashion Sakala he's, he's busy he, get, he gets in your face he's very quick any kind of loose ball he's going to try and win that straight away. Rangers have the ball again with O'Reilly. O'Reilly on this right hand side for Rangers puts the ball into the box it's a good ball to swell but it's missed everyone but I didn't it full of Tavernier's arm. That's what Rangers are saying. And Todd Campbell has surely bundled his man over there for a penalty. It looked as if he'd mistimed his tackle. Really interesting one there. Stephen McClain most play on. He's let a lot of tackles go on there. But I was certain that we may well have a penalty there. Because it looked as if Hatate got himself in between man and ball. And felt the nudge of Campbell. But we've waved play on here. And Celtic come forward again on the right-hand side with Rolston. Rolston got support in O'Reilly. He uses him. O'Reilly fires it across the face of goal. But again, cleared away. And it will be... A free kick to Rangers there as a late foot comes in from O'Reilly on Ryan Jack and that will just relieve some of the pressure. But I looked for all intents and purposes there. We may well have had a penalty pull. Well, let's have a look here. The first one was uh, the uh, the handball that was uh, appealed and then there was potentially a foul. As Abada puts this ball in to the penalty area. Mm, oh, they've actually just shown us the second replay here. Now we're going to have a look. Well, as Goldson hits the deck as he's sliding in, I mean, his arm is out. The ball strikes him on the arm. And uh, Postecoglou and his bench appealed that immediately. And then there was a potential for a push. Now, uh, as the referee said that this free kick needs to be taken, or as he's saying that we, we need to wait, 
It's just a question now of whether or not uh, they're going to have and a look at it. But they've got two games. They've got a goal from one there. Obviously, these waves play on. So neither penalty has been given. I think the goal from one you can probably count him unlucky because he's sliding on the floor. Naturally, as you slide, your arms do come out. But Celtic will make the case that he's blocking the trajectory of the ball there, and the ball's going to come through to. Uh, Huang Ju, who's on the edge of the box, about ten yards out there, and he's, the ball's going to fall to him. If the yeah, I mean, it's, as I say, if, if this was a away from match, we'd be talking about a penalty okay. now because they they give a penalty for just about any contact with the hand and the ball. But there, I think that there's got to be a little bit of common sense whether or not uh, Goldson did everything he could to avoid that chan that uh, contact with the ball. If he was trying to slide in to clear the ball, so I don't think there was any uh, intent in terms of using his arm, and that's probably how the officials have seen it. The Todd Campbell challenge, we didn't actually see a replay of that, but it did look clumsy in the back of Atate, but of course. Referee and his VAR official have said that we will not get a penalty. It's a ball's play out there from Cobb. actually towards Joe Hart. And for a second, it looked as if Joe Hart didn't have his bearings. I thought that might well just roll over the line. The ball was right on the line there. And Joe Hart, again, can count himself a lucky boy. He's able to get it cleared up the field, though. And Celtic have won a throw in from that. But that was very, very close to being a nightmare moment for the English goalkeeper. Two minutes have been added on by the fourth official. Can Celtic reduce the deficit in the small time that remains? Well, it's um, if, if, I, if as I say, based on what we've seen so far, I'd be very surprised if they did. But uh, as I say, old firm games can surprise you. Celtic can certainly surprise you. And as they're on the attack now down the left, Cantwell oh, back brilliant. in defence. That's superb. Not only does Cantwell use his body uh, to win the ball, but he then plays the ball off his opponent and wins his side a goal kick. And he turns to his fans as if he's just scored a goal. He then asks for more for the Rangers fans, doesn't he? Talk about he's been enjoying a rich vein of form. At the moment, as he? he's got three goals and four assists in his 12 appearances for Rangers this season. That was after he got none in for Norwich. No goals or assists in the games he played for Norwich this season. So the change was needed for then the former Norwich and Bournemouth man, of course. He spent a season on loan at Bournemouth. Yeah, I mean, he always felt like he was sort of part of the furniture at Norwich. He was from that part of the world. He was a very popular player. He had all these sort of uh, funny little dance moves that he would do if he'd score a goal. And he just felt as though he was uh, very much a Norwich man. But I think he fell out with two managers uh, six, uh, in succession at, uh, at Carrow Road. And actually, with, without being disrespectful to Norwich, with them now stuck in the championship and not in the playoffs, I would argue that Cantwell, although he fell out of favour, he's still a very ta talented player who could do something uh, here in, in Scottish football. And he certainly proved that. And I think you know, Rangers, they've shown this season that they've, they've had some great results in the Champions League in re previous years as well. It's European football, and if, you, if you're going to play in the Championship, I think a lot of players would actually see this move as a step up to Scotland. You're in the Champions oh, League playing yeah. European football, a game of this magnitude, an old firm derby. It's just a say, game absolutely, the, 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 the old firm, uh, the ma matches, the size of the stadium and, and everything else, the TV coverage you get by being in the Scottish Premiership, it's all uh, it's all good news for, uh, for Todd Cantwell. We're in the last few seconds of injury time now, and uh, Celtic are trying to get forward, but Rangers aren't really letting them. Yeah, Kobe Ashley finds his captain McGregor, McGregor into the feet of Atase, but John Lundstrom does well to put him under pressure, and I think he's going to blow the half-time whistle. John Lundstrom is furious, he fought a free kick, it was given against him there. He was about to explode. And then the referee said, no, calm down, John. It is half-time. So the half-time whistle has blown at Ibrox. A far start from the host that meant that Todd Campbell was able to finish low in between the legs of Joe Hart, following on from a John Nonstrom shot from distance. And then Celtic grew back into the game, but it was Rangers that were able to double their advantages. They had a bit of extended pressure. They won a corner, Tavernier's corner, into the box towards John Suter, who headed in for his first ever Rangers goal. Half-time at Ibrox. Rangers 2, Celtic nil.